few months ago, a consent decree was reached between the FAA and the city of Santa Monica to shorten the sole runway at SMO from just under 5,000 feet to 3,500 feet. Hello again, Instagram, and good morning for all of my fellow West Coast friends. We're again in Arizona, this time in Scottsdale. Uh, city Councilman Guy Phillips is behind me, currently setting up for his anti-mandatory mask rally. You see it in the news every day. Millennials are killing the X, Y, and Z industries. And with direct to your door services like Amazon and Postmates, it's easy to see why brick and mortars are struggling. There are few things that smartphones and smart apps have yet to revolutionize. And believe it or not, doctor's offices may be the next thing on the proverbial millennial hit list. It is that time of year again. I'm here at the grand opening of ICE in Santa Monica, where every year a small portion of our beach community is transformed into a winter wonderland. The sun is setting here in Santa Monica, but not just literally tonight. For a number of businesses here on Main Street, the sun is going down permanently. More than 56,000 students self-identify as homeless. That's more than the entire population of USC or UCLA. Well, that construction cost the city of Mesa $100 million, and with it, they bought not only the new Arizona State Route 24, but also an opportunity to build a better community. The West LA Courthouse is somewhat of a historic landmark for skateboarding. As memorialized in Jonah Hill's new movie, Mid-90s, the spot was a go-to during the golden era of skateboarding, and it continues to be a popular spot today. Much to the dismay of skaters, back in September, Governor Jerry Brown signed a bill putting this courthouse up for sale, meaning the future of this beloved skate park is in jeopardy. I think a lot, a lot of people are going to think it's really lame this place has got a lot of history. Famous for its mini ledges, empty fountain, and stage, the courthouse quickly became one of the most popular and iconic skate spots. I love this place. The city opened up the courthouse plaza for skating in a partnership with Nike back in 2014. But the new bill, which went into effect immediately, authorizes the State Judicial Council to sell the courthouse and surrounding buildings at fair market value. It's going to be a big suck for sure. Um, a huge death for skateboarding. It's not clear when exactly skaters will be forced out of the area. I mean, the only place you can go is Stoner or Venice, but Venice is full of kooks and Stoner is super slippery. Though, they know one yeah. thing for sure. They're gonna have to like do a lot of stuff to this to make it unskatable, because kids are gonna come here no matter what. For Edify TV, this is Kaylee Chella reporting. Made five of us homeless and jobless. And Tara Scales is an 82-year-old working artist. At least, she was, until the city shut down a 45-year-old artist co-op. And Tara says a building inspector had been by a number of times over the years. But this year, when she heard that people were living there, she called in code enforcement. They put a yellow signs on the door, which meant you can only walk in and out of here to remove things. While Antara wasn't living at the studio full time, she may as well have been. I was there from like eight in the morning till midnight. I ate there, I took showers there, I, I worked there and did everything there. The only other place she calls home is her car with her loyal companion, Bodie. Now I'm on the street. <laughs> 24-7 in my car. More so than her living situation, Antara says her number one problem is her loss of income. She needs a new affordable pottery studio on the west side that's accessible with her walker. But Antara is neither dejected nor alone. After posting her story on Facebook, a local Santa Monica woman started a GoFundMe for Antara, which has already raised over $6,000. She's like my advocate, my champion, <laughs> my gladiator. And Tara says it's now up to their absent landlady to fix the violations, but no one knows when or if that'll happen. She can fix it up, she can sell it, she can do whatever she wants with it. We don't know. Regardless, she says it's not only a loss to her, but a loss to the community and the history of Santa Monica. It was one of a kind. It was one of the leftovers from the 60s. You know, here, here's a, an art studio that survived, the painters and woodworkers and potters and, and you know, on. For Edify TV, this is Kaylee Chella reporting. We do everything on horseback that we did in a patrol car. The streets on Mill may look calm right now, but they take on a different image at night. That's when the Tempe PD calls in their hoofed friends for backup. Master trainer Ted Knoll says one officer on horseback can do the job of 10 officers on foot. 
Yo! Whenever there's a, an altercation on mill or something where the bikes have to go up on the sidewalk to make an arrest, we go up in there and separate them and we'll give them a 10 to 15 foot circle to work in. So they're safe to be able to do what they have to do. But training for the Tempe Mounted Unit is a rigorous task. <laughs> Both for the human officers and the horses. This big guy right here is named Thor. He's six years old and you might have seen him patrolling Mill Avenue. He's actually out here with his fellow officers learning riot and crowd control techniques today. Along with being willing to ride, officers must first pass a written test to get into the program. Then they have to complete 120 hours of both academic and practical training. Brian Berman, an officer on the Tempe Bicycle Unit, says without the horses, he wouldn't be able to do his job. The best sound in the world is hearing that sound of the horses coming up, uh, hearing the pitter-patter of their feet. These four-legged officers keeping Mill Avenue safe for everyone.